And now we have big data versus non-big data. If you have huge volume of data, which is getting recorded at a rapid speed, and if you have variety of data being captured, that data would be called as big data. For example, if I just go here and say that we have something called as Pratt and Whitney, okay? This is a company which produces wind turbines, etc., and engines which are fitted into the uh, planes, airplanes, aircrafts. And supposedly, a 12-hour flight journey can produce up to 844 terabytes of data from one engine of Pratt & White. One engine, one turbofan engine would generate in a 12 hour flight journey would generate 844 terabytes of data. How many flights would be flying in a given day? Just imagine the amount of data that get generated. 844 terabytes of data. So the volume of data from a single flight which is 844 terabytes of data, one single flight, one 12 hour journey. We cannot store that on any of our laptops or computers that we have. And think about all the aircrafts put together, generating the data, all the turbofan engines generating data. That would be overwhelming, right? So that's huge volume of data. Velocity, speed, continuously the turbine would be getting generated, I mean, it would be rotating at a super fast speed and it would be generating data continuously at a rapid speed. That's velocity. And you also have variety of data because what happens is it's not just data from the engines data from the sensors. You'll also have video cameras fitted into the aircraft. So video is getting captured. The audio conversations of the pilots was seated in the cockpit. Their conversations are continuously recorded. Continuously, they will be interacting with the air traffic controllers. Okay, so what will happen is if you are say taking off your flight from New York, to probably Delhi. Then throughout this, uh, you would be assigned, your flight would be assigned a tunnel. Okay, within that tunnel, your flight travels and throughout probably uh, somewhere, you know, the air traffic controller of New York would pass on the control to another air traffic controller. And that air traffic controller would pass on to probably another air traffic controller in Dubai, from there to probably India, in that way, right? So throughout the conversations keep on happening and then your audio, you know, is captured. And there'll be a lot of sensors which will capture the air pressure, air wind, so on and so forth. So Continuously, you are getting data from wide variety of sources. And if you have these three Vs in your data, that is called as big data. A few books also include four Vs or five Vs, such as veracity. Veracity means uncertainty in the data or some other V. You can keep on adding multiple Vs out there and um, that would be called as big data. Any data which doesn't have these characteristics would be called as non-big data. However, I believe this kind of explanation is very bookish. We want some practical explanation. So 
if you have say two terabyte storage in your infrastructure in your server in your computer say you have two terabytes of data and if you get 10 terabytes of data for your storage for your infrastructure this 10 terabytes of data which is provided to you would be big data for your infrastructure because you do not have the storage capacity this 10 terabytes of data would be called as big data another thing is processing i'm sure you all would have worked on spreadsheets excel files but do an experiment when you find time on latest of your computers try opening 500 mb excel sheet and try to create something some bar chart try to generate a bar chart from your data this is sufficient for your application to crash if we show you one symbol it will go on and on round run round, round and round which means you have to wait and wait and wait you can go have a cup of coffee and come or you can probably go watch a movie and come back by then most probably you would see a bar chart or maybe you see a message saying that your application crashed so even a 500 mb excel file if you cannot process that if you cannot generate the bar chart then you just run into big data problem so big data is that data which cannot be stored on your infrastructure which cannot be processed using your applications okay this is a more practical uh, you know understanding of what big data is all right why did we talk about this all right we discussed about these for couple of reasons one is if you have big data whether it is structured or unstructured or semi structured doesn't matter whether it is structured or unstructured or semi structured doesn't matter at the end of the day you end up implementing the storage and processing using hadoop framework there's something called as hadoop framework okay and if you have data which is not big data but if it is structured not big data which is structured right you you usually end up storing that data in a relational database management system such as sql or you have an open source database called as mysql we also have microsoft sql oracle database so on and so forth and if you have non big data which is either unstructured or semi structured then you store the data in no sql databases such as mongodb cassandra etc the reason why i'm introducing you all to these is just for you all to have a high level understanding mostly people won't ask you questions on okay explain me about cassandra explain me about mongodb etc but it is always good to have a high level understanding of where the data gets stored given that you know it's big data or non big data or structured or unstructured or semi structured